The 6.5 is on the road here in Las Vegas. We're at Dell Tech World 2025. It is AI all morning, noon, and night. It is awesome. We're talking hardware, software, wrap the bow with services here. Daniel, is this great? Yeah, you know, for a couple of geeks, we really do love this stuff. <laughs> and it's been an amazing couple of days of really bringing the technology to life. And you know, Pat, all this stuff is so interconnected. It's not a piece of hardware. It's not a rack system. We really are building experiences, changing the world. And I think that's a lot about what Michael, what Jeff, what all the keynotes that we've heard is taking it, bringing yeah. it to life, making these experiences real. And of course, the conversations we're having up here all day have been about that too. That's right, I mean, part of making it real is having the right uh, compute, the right storage, the right networking, and pulling it all together. And Daniel, as we've discussed in the 6.5 a lot, having the right networking can be the difference between being able to run that training or infants run or, or stalling it. Uh, GPUs are left stranded, and who wants stranded GPUs or even XPUs? Yeah, we've got a lot of compute, but we do need all these computers to talk to each other. We need them to scale up and scale out. Yeah. And so sometimes networking is a bit of the unsung hero. That's right. One of the big partnerships we've been monitoring is, is across Dell and Broadcom. And here to talk about this and the whole AI ecosystem is Jazz from Broadcom and David from Dell. Great to see you guys. Yeah, thanks for having, thanks for having us. us. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. So, uh, David, let's start off with you. Put you on the hot seat, you ready? All right, yeah, I'm ready. All right, you know, there's so much innovation going on. We're seeing the pace, it's across all computer architectures, uh, CPUs, XPUs, GPUs. Um, the roadmap becomes really important because people are trying to pick, when do I get in? Um, you know, how do I deal with now what seems to be annual cycles? Talk a little bit about how you're thinking about your platforms, how you're dealing with these rapid cycle times. Absolutely. I mean, Daniel, you're absolutely right. The, the refresh cycles are shortening. There's a ton of diversity out there. There's lots of options. You know, the, the first thing for us is just staying close to our partners, staying close to our customers. That's what DTW is all about, right? This is my favorite time of the year. You come out here, we engage with our customers, we get their feedback, but we do this all year round. We do it in a lot of different ways. So that's kind of the, the relationship aspect of it. From a product aspect, it's, it's about embracing openness and helping drive openness into our product sets. A great example there is, is just interconnectivity, both inside the server and outside, like networking, like Pat spoke about a moment ago. We're talking about out here our new 9864 switch that has 64 ports of 800 gig speed. That's something we built in partnership with Broadcom. We have our sonic distribution for AI that brings tremendous improvements to that open networking yeah. ecosystem that we also built with Broadcom. So we're really excited about those things and we think if you have that in place, if you have that open foundation, you're able to embrace these technologies as they come on board and, and you need to get them employed and deployed inside your data center. So Jazz, us on the 6.5, we know you, we've talked to you yes. and, and everybody up and down the chain, uh, but can you talk about uh, what you do at Broadcom, how it fits into Broadcom's yeah. over AI, overall AI strategy, and then I'd love for you to talk about your sixth generation PCIe switch okay. as well. Good, let me break that down. It's like so. four, 14 <laughs> questions. 14 questions, I got it, I got it. One, two, three, four. So, Everything is interconnected. So we've got five franchises or divisions inside Broadcom that are interconnected for AI. The first one is custom XPUs. Uh, second one is Ethernet switching for scale out and scale up. Yeah. Third one is optics. Fourth one is uh, surties and retimers. And then there's my division. So my division is focused on inside the server. Yes. So if you open up a server, an AI server, one of these big guys, quarter million dollars, you'll find XPUs, GPUs, CPUs, NICs, NVMe drives, and what all these elements have in common is PCIe as a protocol. Yeah. So one of the first uh, product lines that I have is PCIe switching for the internal fabric inside the AI server, and then Ethernet NICs to connect to the network, and storage connectivity, we'll, which we'll talk a little bit more about. So uh, we, I'm glad you mentioned the sixth generation PCIe switch. So again, a lot I of these- I think I was quoted in your press release. You I were. I think I was. Thank you for that, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Listen, I like to put my name on <laughs> high quality stuff. Yes. Well, we're, we're super happy about the quality. So we, <laughs> we've been doing PCIe switches for- uh, No victory laps, Moorhead. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> that I'm going. You're going to get the next quote. <laughs> so we've been doing PCIe switches for 25 years. 
Yeah. And uh, we've been first to market and production with the first five, and on PCA Gen 6, yeah. we repeated the same thing. We're in production now with our PCA switch. And there's two reasons why this is important. The first one is, as a whole industry, uh, system providers, chip providers, we all need to go from PCI Gen 5 to Gen 6. Yes. Oh. These transitions are hard, and you need what we call the golden node. So it's that chip that comes out first that you can count on and yes. interconnect with. So a lot of our shipments right now are for uh, some of our competitors, some of our ecosystem partners that need to bring up their solutions. Yeah. And then the other part, which we're working on with, uh, with Dell and so forth, is building the next wave of AI servers. Yeah. So with this new chip, PCIe Gen 6, we can have one port running at one terabit per second with PCIe bandwidth. So that's a big, big jump in performance. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there, there is a lot of performance to consider right now, and there's so much Absolutely. optionality. Um, it's so complex, and you know, you and I talk a lot about this, right? Who's making money on AI right now? It's infrastructure, <laughs> silicon, and it's consulting. And so what's interesting here is, you know, this panel, you sort of bring everything to the table of where there's dollars to be made, but the dollars are to be made in both, A, the opportunity that we know AI is going to present, the 20 trillion or so that we estimate in economic value, but it's also, ultimately, someone has to help companies make this stuff work, and that's what gives CEOs and boards indigestion, is they're like, yeah, we want to do this stuff, but we're spending a fortune, we're not sure what kind of return we're going to get. So, David, start with you, but I'd like to hear from both of you on this one. Talk a little bit about how you're sort of breaking down complexity. How are you helping customers deal with this, guide them through? Of course, you'll make money selling them servers, yeah. and selling them networking, but how are you making sure they're also successful in their journey? Well, there, there's, uh, there's truth in the data. What we enable for our customers to consume, the type of data we want to provide is understanding their performance capabilities, what you can get with each technology. We have a tremendous technical marketing organization. We work internally on performance characterization, understanding how these different subsystems operate. When we bring new technologies to the table, like some of the things we're talking about here, we want to characterize them and then talk about the use cases where they're going to make the most sense. In a lot of cases as well, we're going to go partner with great teams like uh, some Signal 65. This we know those really guys. Great. Hey. Yeah, you know those guys. Th thank uh, you. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Um, Long shot. A little, little air fist bump. So we're going to partner with, with folks like you to go put these performance white papers out and put them in our customers' hands because it's going to help them make the right decisions about these different technology waves, right? Excellent. So uh, I want to move to AI storage. Yes. Okay. I mean, AI compute is sexy and fun, but if you're not connecting the compute to the storage, well, the memory on the GPU or the XPU and everything together, you're going to have a suboptimal uh, solution here. Uh, this week you launched Perk 13, and I wonder if you could walk us through what's its role in AI service, because I don't think a lot of people have actually heard of this. You want me to start off on that? Absolutely, okay. please. So let's start off with Perk. What does it stand for? <laughs> Power Edge Rate Controller. So effectively, it's a uh, little board with a storage controller on it to interconnect the CPU to drives. It does the protocol conversion, depending on the type of drive that you have. Right. And more importantly, it does the data protection. So example, if I have a server with 16 NVMe drives, one of those drives goes bad, you can reconstruct the complete data with the rate controller. It takes care of all the data protection. Yeah. The other thing is, imagine you have a server and you're in the process of setting data from the CPU to the drives, writing it, okay. and then you lose power. So we've put a little supercapacitor on the per controller so that it saves the writes and flights. Oh, interesting. So it's really robust from a data protection uh, perspective. So uh, we've been working with Dell for many, many years, decades, and now we're introducing Perk 13. So the, one of the questions you asked is how is this applicable from an AI perspective? Well, the first thing is there's some AI workloads that don't need GPGPUs. They just need a server with fastest compute. Example, what we have on the show floor right now, we've got uh, two dual cores, 192 cores each, dual sockets, 384 cores. Yeah. You need a lot of storage performance to feed that monster. And if you're running large database with some AI type workload, maybe not, not training or inference, but just large database, you want to have the fastest CPU, fastest networking, and fastest storage, and the fastest 
storage is local. And if you want to protect it, Perp 13 is the fastest yeah. weapon available out there. The other part is feeding the large AI GP GPU servers, and you need to do data conditioning. So taking all that data, conditioning it, and in a lot of cases, having a, just a high performance uh, compute server with strong storage yeah. can do the job for that. Cool, I love it. So David, quickly, um, help us make this real. As you take their technology, you package it up, you put it into your, into your systems. Um, what are the real applications that you're sort of seeing that the capabilities of Perk 13 deliver value to customers? So, little shout out to, to uh, our friends at Broadcom. You, you, said, you said 25 years earlier. We've been doing uh, storage controllers, Perk, for 25 years now as well, right? And so we've really enjoyed that. The old school principles of protecting your data at the hardware level have never been more important as Josh just explained. The most important uh, asset in your compute environment is your data. So you have to build that protection at the hardware level. And then there was a conversation I had this morning that I think sums it up perfectly. As customers think about protecting that data at the hardware level and then they think about all the operations they have to run as part of an AI uh, workload, an AI use case, whether it's inferencing or, or small language model training, they have to think about the throughput, the overall performance, and there's been some reluctance to combine that protection that you get with, the, with PERC with the overall needs for performance. And I think PERC 13 just solves all of that, and that would be probably the number one takeaway is all of that is captured in this great product that we put on top of our next generation PowerEdge servers. We're really excited about what our customers are going to be able to do for that within, with that in their environment. Well, David and Jazz, it sounds like a very strong partnership it's been very, uh, you know, it's been very impressive from our end at Signal 65 as we've worked on a number of these different test performance. Jazz, you recently shared a Perk 13 asset that, that we actually created uh, yeah. collectively here as a group, yeah. and I think hopefully everybody out there that's interested in, in learning a little bit more about the technical behind this gives it a look. Pat, we'll have to make sure we share that out, right? Let's put it in the show notes for sure. I mean, you know, we don't like victory laps except when we do. So, <laughs> Jazz, David. Thank you both so much for joining us here on the 6.5. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank so you, everybody, for being part of this 6.5 on the road. We are here at Dell Technologies World 2025 in Las Vegas. We're going to step away for just a moment, but we will be back soon. So stick with us.